Hey everyone, this is Ben back with you in the Midwest Model Shop. Today we're doing a quick little review of True North paints. Now what's the big deal about True North paints? They're enamel. That is the big deal about True North paints. I was contacted a little while ago by Jamie DuPont. He is the owner operator of True North paints. And he said that, you know, he's just talking about my Missouri build and everything like that. And that he has been in the paint business uh, personally for the last six years, studying and learning things, and he's been running his company for the last five. And he wanted me to know that enamel paints are in fact not dead, and they are made right here in the United States. So he wanted to know if I'd be interested in reviewing some. I said, absolutely, go ahead and send them down. So some key notes here, obviously, right out of the bottle, you can go ahead and brush them. I've already done this, uh, you wanna use you know, you could use regular enamel reducer to thin them and clean your brushes with, or use the True North paint uh, enamel reducer. Uh, I asked him, I said, what are some of the finer points here? And he said, you could thin it 15 to 25% for airbrushing. I probably should have used that ratio, but I just guessed. Uh, if you want to use a higher quality mineral spirits, you can go ahead and do that. Or no, I'm sorry, He, yeah, use higher quality mineral spirits, less stinky. I think that's what he's using. These do not smell like enamel paints. They're not stinky. Uh, I didn't have trouble till I got out my enamel reducer as far as odors go. Uh, no cobalt for dryers. That's a little safer and more environmentally friendly. We like that. No retarder needed. That is true. This stuff goes down wet and dries flat if in fact that's what you're getting. Um, it'll adhere to any surface. Obviously, some oily surfaces could be a problem, and it works extremely well with photo etch, which is a big deal. We all know that that chips right off. Um, sandable when completely dry. Right now, he's selling these for $4.99, but come January 1st, 2023, they're going to go up to $5.99. That's just your obvious basic inflation that's going on. Uh, he's working on having some sets coming out. Right now, you just get your basic bottles, but uh, he's working on, on stuff like that. His website, truenorthpaints.com, link in the description down below. Here it is. Uh, please go take a look and check it out. He sent me a bunch of United States Navy colors, um, and these are all... So he carries a full line of FS number matchmaking and has a large supply line of World War II area paints uh, specifically for United States Navy. And he's matched them to the Snyder and Short paint chips. So just so you know, that's where the colors are coming from. Uh, what I'm gonna do in the video, I'm not gonna hand brush paint any of them because they paint great. I made this little uh, cheater card here and airbrushed a bunch of colors on. I did get, I'll let you know right out of the gate here, I did get one bad bottle. Uh, what was it? It was just a regular deck blue. Something something was wrong. The, the lid was on tight, but a chemical had separated in there and dried up and it messed things up. I still tried to paint it though. Uh, and just like any enamel paint, even if it goes bad, you probably can coax with some enough thinner out of it, the right color out of it and paint it. And that was true, I was able to do it here, but it's messed up on this card because then of course I went ahead and stuck tape over the top of it and peeled it right off. Um, I, I painted this paint chip poorly. I, I, I sprayed it on right away over some primer. I dried it very quickly with a hot air dryer. I did not let it sit and cure like it was supposed to. I immediately put tape over the top of it uh, to start masking and it did very well. If I was to do this the right way and I had a little more time to do it the right way, uh, you would get some excellent results. And I'm, I'm very pleased with how these paints turned out. So again, True North and EmilPaints.com. Go check them out. Uh, let's go ahead and get in the video, do a little bit of a demo. And uh, yeah, go check out the website. Made in the United States. This is some good stuff. All right, so here's our little roundup of True North Precision Enamel Paints. I've already used uh, the flat black just in general purpose painting and stuck a brush in and applied it and had no trouble at all. Uh, I went ahead and used just the universal enamel thinner and it cleaned the brushes up just fine, no trouble at all because these are enamel paints. Um, I don't have the preferred enamel thinner uh, that Jamie said to use for the best results, but uh, he said any generic enamel reducer would work, and, and I believe him. So uh, what I've done, let's do some samples here. So this is a piece of cardstock. I, I've gone ahead and 
very quickly just threw a little bit of primer on there. We are using Mr. Surface Primer 1000 on our paint. And then I think what we'll do is like basically mimic a hull bottom, right? So I'd like to get some U.S. Navy Norfolk 65A and a following red on there. I think that will look good. And then we have, well, we use our flat black here. We'll put a, a boot stripe on there. Um, let's see here. He's given us navy green. I think, though, we want to use navy gray, right? It's kind of like our, our hall color. I think that that will look good above that. And then for fun, I like, uh, I like I'm a big fan of deck blue. 1941 we'll use that but he also gave us deck blue 42 20 bravo right so depending on the year you're going to do and i and i like that and then you've got uh standard deck gray if you look at the bottoms you can see that they are different colors so uh that is good also um it's got that nice cap jar looks good and doesn't smell and like he said in the instructions I think I mentioned in the beginning you want to stir these up it's not a shake type of operation so let's get the airbrush fired up we'll, we'll mask off our uh, little piece of demo here and uh, we'll start painting okay here's my card uh, we've got our hull red painted up and I've got my airbrush set at about uh, 10 PSI. And I'm just going to do a real light coat here. And get it going. Uh, comes out real nice. Now, according to Jamie, uh, 10 to 15 minutes drying time. Could be a little longer, could be a little less. He says you do not need to add any retarder to this. Uh, which I've never had to do with any enamel paint I've sprayed anyway. So, and I don't know if I, I might have mixed it a little thin. He says, uh, I think he says 10 to 15% thinner for airbrushing. I'm just messing. I've got stuff on my airbrush I'm messing with. Which is why I'm spraying all blotchy here. I just want to get it on. I think... Enamel paint's very forgiving. There we go. Oh, but it's spraying nice. Like, I'm not having any issues. I'm really far away. I think this is good. All right, so, obviously I've got some wet blotchy spots there you guys are, are watching, but this is the United States Navy Norfolk 65-alpha anti-falling red. And actually that, that might be a really good color for some of you uh, Titanic folks. Do a little more right along here. All right, so we'll get this on evenly here now that I've kind of made a mess of my airbrushing skills. And we'll let it set up and dry. All right, and then we'll come back. Press it on. All right, in an effort to keep things going here, this isn't completely dry. Uh, we're going to switch to our U.S. Navy Haze Gray, late 1941. This is what I needed for the Missouri, I think. But uh, I've masked off basically like a boot stripe area in black. I'll come back and get that later. It's just black. We want to go ahead and get this Haze Gray going right in this area. We'll mimic like a hall, right? And I know it's kind of hard to see because I'm, I'm painting over gray primer, which is always kind of a thing when you're painting over a gray primer. You want to make sure that you can see what you're doing. Sometimes if you get the right color gray primer, uh, you don't have to add another color to it, right? You can just go ahead with what you've got. All right. Again, I'm just being real lazy here about my application and kind of all over the place it's going on real nice i'm i can build up a layer it's super smooth i see it's it's wet see how it's going on wet you it's winter time here in uh the midwest 
and I don't need it any kind of retarder. So that's nice. We're going to leave it here. This is totally wet still. Let's just peel this off, see what happens. Boom. No troubles. Get my little paint off there. This again isn't totally dry. It's sort of there's a little speck right there. We'll put our bootstripe in there. So let's let this dry. Uh, and maybe we'll do like get a couple of the deck blue colors on here. That'll be good. Okay, up next we're gonna try this uh, U.S. Navy 1941 Deck Blue 20B. If I can get it to focus here for you. Now, admittedly, I had problems with it. I think I got a bad bottle. Uh, when I opened it up, and you'll see now it looks okay, but see how thick it is? Uh, there was a big chunk of something, I think a chemical that had separated and got to the top, and I don't know how it dried. I, I could barely get this thing off, uh, but I forced it down to the bottom and I stirred it as best I could. And I, I don't know if I could salvage it. So I know that was not Jamie's intention, but sometimes that happens. So can I salvage it anyway? So I threw some in my airbrush. I put a ton of thinner in there. I'm sure I'm missing some key uh, chemical, which is probably bad, but let me get the paint out here. Here we go. Uh, I think we can make it work anyhow, actually. And as you can see, yep, there we go. I got some thinner up on top there. Whoops, am I going to run out? So whenever I use a lot of thinner in a paint when I'm trying to save it, uh, you sometimes got to turn the pressure way up and you got to back way off. We're going to run out. And you want to really atomize it and let it dry in the air. And you'll still get to use the paint, which is what you see here, but it's really, really runny because it's mostly thinner, right? Uh, you can turn your pressure way down. There's all kinds of little tricks. The point is making it work. I want you to see the color. I love 1941 Deck Blue. I think it's a great color. Uh, I'll touch base with Jamie about my my bottle that's no bueno. We're basically out of paint because I didn't put much in there. But as you can see, other than my splotchiness here, um, yeah, that's what we want. That That's the color I spent time mixing for the Missouri. It might look a little dark there, but that's, that's great. Uh, so I'll dry this off, and maybe we'll try... Let's see here. We can go the next year, right? Let's go 1942. Uh, we'll, we'll mix that up and give that a shot here. Let's let's come back and do that. Okay, let's try our 1942. Yeah, 1942 deck blue. Obviously, it sprays right. Uh, Mixed nicely. So, unfortunately, like I said, something was going on with that other bottle. Uh, I do want you to see, though, I'm spraying over a little bit the previous stuff, and I hope I put enough paint in here. I'm going to show you, it dried a lot lighter. Uh, I realize in the video it looked kind of black. This probably does, too. It's not black. Trust me. It's, it's blue. Uh, and when it dries up, uh, it had a real nice real nice color going. Oh, I'm going to run out. Let's see if we can finish up here. Just real good coverage. Real nice flow. Looks like I got a little clog in my airbrush here, but anyway, that's good enough. I think you can see what's happening here. Peel that off. See if I let this dry enough up here. Oh, I didn't. Alright, this is not fair. Uh, I peeled some paint off here. That's not a fair comparison because it wasn't totally covered all the way. And it's dried with a, a dryer about two minutes. Definitely not cured all the way. But uh, big difference in color here. Let's get this dried off. And uh, yeah, I like this. So we need to do the black boot stripe, right? Let's, uh, let's get some airbrushing going here. Or I'm sorry, some heat going here and we'll come back and finish it up. Okay, final item, let's do the uh, bootstripe. And I want to point out, 
again, I'm doing all the wrong things. I have just sprayed this stuff on. I've heated it up with a hot air dryer to get it kind of dry and then immediately stuck tape on it. Yeah, you're not supposed to do that. Also, look at that deck blue, this 1942, how rich that is. I mean, that's fantastic. This grayer color, the 1941, if I hadn't stuck tape on it and it hadn't been a, a bad bottle, would have probably looked just as amazing. You know, I'm doing all of the wrong stuff here. I mean, you, you don't do this to the paint. You, I mean, yeah, you prime it and you go ahead and you spray it on nicely. Uh, and you can hit it with a hot air uh, blower dryer to, to, to accelerate the dry time, but then you let it sit and cure. I mean, that's what you do. Even uh, Jamie says 15, 20 minutes, I think he said. Uh, I'm not even giving it a quarter of that time. Uh, this is total paint abuse. This is absolutely the wrong thing to do. And look how nice it's turning out anyway. I gotta tell you, uh, pretty good. Pr pr pretty good. So let's go ahead and get all nice and wet on there. Okay. And I also want to comment, uh, you have a nice layer. It builds up. There's some thickness there to the paint, which I, I really, really like. Uh, again, there's some marks on the sand and falling red because I stuck tape on it immediately. That was not what you should do. Uh, <laughs> and then we got some overspray there from my black, but you know, you get the idea. I mean, that's dope. This has got to dry up here. Let's let's give it a minute to the flat back, flat black to dry flat black. All right, that's our flat black. So I mean, look how smooth it is. It's great. Now we've got a little bit of texturing going on here because I again I stuck to me tape on it immediately. Um, don't do that. I, down here, this is a little bit more indicative of what you expect. The gray is nice. Uh, I've got some overspray there. This I showed anyway. Um, it went on nice and smooth. I think you saw it in the previous shot and then I went and peeled off the tape and it pulled it off. Look at that blue, the 1942 deck blue. So for enamel paint that is applied poorly in the wrong order um, and then taped up and abused, this is really nice. I have a stinking suspicion that in 45 minutes this stuff's going to be rock hard and by tomorrow uh, basically impermeable. Now he said, if I didn't mention already, that this stuff loves photo etch metal, sticks to it with no trouble at all. Obviously if you've got oil and grease on it you might run into a little trouble, that's true of any paint. But the thing about enamel is a minimum prep, right? Just get it on and get it going and let it dry and you're done and it's permanent. Uh, I think this is fantastic. Love how the flat black sprayed. I've been brush painting with it already. I was super happy with it. Um, yeah, this is some good stuff. True North paint made in the United States, 16 ounces, uh, $5.99 a bottle starting January 1st, 2023. Inflation, that does that to you. Uh, I don't think that's a bad price given how much paint you get. It's a little bit bigger than a Model Master uh, bottle. Um, this is good stuff. I'm happy. I'm glad that Jamie contacted me, and uh, I think I'm going to be buying some more paint. All right, uh, please, once again, go ahead and check out his website, truenorthpaints.com, and, uh, you know, give it a look and maybe check out what he's got. He's he, Again, he's releasing more colors and putting some sets together and things like that. So, uh, yeah, FS model matching numbers. This is good stuff. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a comment down below. We'll see you next time.